a never-to-be-forgotten thrill of a lifetime, take an air venture to the top of the world. See Alaska's Arctic. You're off to a wonderful flying start when you board a Northwest Airlines stratocruiser flying coast to coast and to Alaska and the Orient. The giant stratocruisers are the largest and finest planes serving Alaska. They're double-decked with exclusive stratocruiser lounge, pressurized cabins, and other luxury features. As you wing your way over the beautiful, unspoiled wilderness of Canada and Alaska, you relax in your king-size chair and daydream of the adventures that lie ahead. Sightseeing Anchorage, Alaska's largest city. A side trip to Matanuska Valley, the farmer's wonderland. A trip over the Alaska Railroad to Mount McKinley National Park to view the highest mountain in North America, towering 20,300 feet above the sea, and then on to Fairbanks and across to the Arctic Circle to Eskimo land. Your daydreaming is interrupted by a gentle nudge from your charming stewardess as she tells you your plane is over Anchorage. You watch the shadow of your magic carpet as you approach the modern international airport ready to begin your air venture in Alaska. At Fairbanks, you'll again take to the air when you board a Wien Alaska Airlines DC-3 and parallel the mighty mile-wide Yukon River on your way to Nome. The historic scene of one of the world's most famous gold rushes. From Nome, you fly to the most westerly point on the North American continent, where two days, two oceans, and two continents meet. Only 54 miles of the Bering Strait separate Alaska from Russian Siberia. It's very probable that you'll see a large part of the coastline of East Cape Siberia. You enter the realm of the midnight sun when you cross the Arctic Circle and receive a treasured Arctic Circle certificate signed by the crew of your plane. Soon you'll land inside the Arctic zone at Kotzebue, the largest Eskimo village in Alaska. If you arrive in the Arctic before the spring breakup, usually mid-May, you're in for many extra thrills. You'll find the dependable Arctic taxi waiting at the airport as your plane comes to a stop. You'll know at a glance that this is the real thing as you see the shy, friendly, fur-clothed Eskimos watch the big silver bird unload. Your camera will be in for a real workout when you first set foot on Arctic soil, or in this case, Arctic snow. The skilled ground crew, with the help of the husky sled dog, soon have the plane loaded. The mail being the last, but not the least important cargo placed on board. You'll want a picture of the sled dogs watching the giant bird ruffle its feathers as it prepares to take to the sky. Your ride to the Eskimo village with dog power replacing horsepower will give you many thrills and many chances to snap pictures as you glide along over the dog team trails, just as these native people have been doing for untold centuries. No traffic lights here to slow you down. You'll probably find the village looking somewhat like this, with huge snowdrifts all but submerging many of the native homes. A tunnel through the wind-packed snow leads to the home of this happy boy. One of his chores is to see that it's kept open and that steps are chopped in the hard snow so that all the family and their friends can enter. You'll never tire of watching these people fish through the ocean ice in front of their homes. Fish caught in this fashion are a very important food item for the Eskimo and his ever hungry dog team. Everyone joins in the fun as the tomcod, bullheads, and smelt are caught by the jigging action of the bright-colored homemade lure, which is carved from walrus ivory. The barbless hook, which permits them to fish all day without touching the fish or the line, is not a new invention. The same method of ice fishing is thousands of years old, and it's interesting to note that it still beats any modern ice fishing gear.
You'll probably see dog sleds loaded with a prize Arctic she fish arriving from Kobuk Lake. These delicious fish are caught in the same manner as the tomcod and weigh from 10 to 50 pounds. If you're looking for extra thrills, a trip in a ski-equipped plane with one of our famous Arctic bush pilots like John Cross is sure to fill the bill. John has logged over 15,000 hours, most of it north of the Arctic Circle. The ski plane makes its own blizzard as it glides along over the snow, and soon you'll feel the slapping of the skis on the hard-packed runway as you gain speed. The village becomes a mystic blur, and you're on your way to one of the large reindeer herds near Katsuyu. You'll land at the front door of these hardy nomadic Eskimo, people of the deer, who live in tents throughout the year as they shepherd the herd through severe Arctic winter storms. The bush pilot and his guests are met with glee for they bring mail and a few meager supplies as well as word from the outside world. Here you will see reindeer taking the place of the husky work dog as they pull the herders and their supplies over the Arctic tundra. This deer has just returned from a 30-mile trip. One deer can pull 350 pounds for a full day's travel. He's then allowed to rest for a day. Thought you were my mama, dear, but I guess I made a mistake. The sled deer is staked out on the tundra for rest and a chance to feed on the various kinds of lichens or reindeer moss upon which it must subsist during the long winter months, often by pawing through deep snow to obtain it. Spring is here at last, and the herders have many extra cares, for this herd of over 5,000 deer now has 1,200 newborn fawns, and more arriving every day. A stampede caused by the savage Arctic wolves could wipe out the entire fawn crop if left unattended. Whenever possible, sled deer are used for transportation around the herd, which is continually on the move as it searches for reindeer moss. One of the herder's never-ending jobs is to find a suitable grazing area and then to keep the deer there, in a land where fences are unknown and a barn unheard of. Hey, wait for me! Each herder has his family at the main base camp, which has moved about every 10 days. The children wear fur clothes made of reindeer, rabbit, wolf, and fox skins. They have all outdoors to play in, and they learn about the use of sleds when they're very young. The highlight of the day occurs when a visitor from a far-off village arrives with news of relatives and friends. The dog team is unharnessed and staked out. The coffee will soon be ready, but first that little matter of cutting wood and building a fire. Yes, the people of the deer lead a very primitive life by our standards, but I doubt if you'll find a more contented, peaceful, happier group on this earth. A short flight and we're back at Kotzebue. It's hard to tell that spring is just around the corner. The schoolhouse is still half buried in the snow drifts. These schoolgirls go to their classes through tunnels in the snow. The smokestack and roof are all that you can see of many of the homes. But here's one sure sign that the breakup is not far away. A hunter returns with a heavy sled load of hair seal and reports that open water is only 40 miles offshore and that many seal play there among the ice cakes.
To the Eskimo of the Arctic regions, the hair seal is the very staff of life. The seal is insulated from the cold by a three-inch blanket of blubber between the hide and the body flesh. This blubber furnishes the all-important seal oil, which is so essential during the long winter season. The seal's skin is used extensively for clothing and is very durable. The thick, silky coat of the young hair seal furnishes excellent material for baby garments. This large ugruk, or bearded seal, weighs about 400 pounds. The brilliant Arctic spring with its warm 24-hour sun soon breaks the bounds of old man winter, and the ice that has held the ocean captive for seven long months starts to give way. The people dance with joy as they watch the huge ice cakes lose their grip on the shore and go plunging out to sea. Even the huskies are glad to see open water again, for they know there'll be plenty of fish and whale when the ice is gone. This beautiful ice flow will continue for a week or possibly two before the sea is open in front of the village. You'll be thrilled as you watch the ever-changing mass of ice tumble and roll as it moves on. Huge ice cakes from nearby rivers that are breaking up lodge on the beaches, and all hands turn to collecting the clear, blue, freshwater ice, which will be used for drinking water and cooking purposes. After melting snow for water throughout the winter months, this free front door delivery of pure, clear ice is something to be thankful for and each family stores a large quantity of the hard water. Just as soon as the ice is cleared from the beaches, the native fishermen, young and old, are on the job, for the sea is teeming with many kinds of fish. These children are pulling out whitefish, smelt, tomcod, and bullheads about as fast as they can bait their hooks. You don't need a lot of fancy fishing gear to land them, just a piece of string and a hook. And here's what you get. While the children play at fishing, the grown-ups turn to an earnest, for now they must gather the harvest that will help feed them through the coming winter. Grandma helps put out the fish net as she has done for many years. These puppies play while they wait for the fun to start and they don't have long to wait. In a few minutes, the net is alive with fish. Salmon, whitefish, arctic trout, and she fish. The catch is determined by the endurance of the fishermen, but you can rest assured that none of the fish are wasted. Within an hour, all these fish will be cleaned and hanging on the fish racks to dry in the sun. Grandma works hard at the job. It takes an expert to untangle a gill net from the fish. Here is a young, tasty she fish that will probably serve as the evening meal. They are similar to halibut and soon become a favorite of anyone who tries them. While the women and children are taking fish from the sea close to home, the men are out after bigger game. Many schools of beluga, the small white arctic whale, move in close to shore to feed on the abundant fish there. Every able-bodied man will join the chase. The modern Eskimo uses a power-driven boat and a high-powered rifle. If you're looking for excitement and adventure, you can arrange to accompany these fearless hunters as they chase the beluga whale into shallow water. Only an expert rifleman can score a hit on the fast-moving whale while plunging through the choppy sea. Once a whale is wounded, it must be harpooned at once or it will sink and possibly be lost.
beluga is 12 to 15 feet long. It is securely tied to the side of the small boat by a special hitch through its mouth. The 1,500 pound mammal is of great value to the Eskimo. And who wouldn't be proud to take home such a trophy? Though it's midnight, the hunt goes on. Time has little meaning to these people in the land of the midnight sun. The hunt will stop only when the beluga gets into deep water where he can outmaneuver the small boats. Then it's time to head home, each boat towing its trophies at the hunt. They can be sure of a hearty welcome by those on shore who have been watching and keeping score whenever possible. Many willing hands help pull the whale on the beach, for they know they'll all take part in eating the blubber and meat. And best of all is the one half inch thick white outer skin, which has a strange nutty flavor. This group of Kotzebue visitors tried their luck at beaching a whale. Looks like some of them didn't have their Wheaties today. This seems like a better way. At least it takes a smaller crew. The whale is hardly ashore when the butchering crew takes over. The women wield a curved, razor-sharp, homemade knife called an ulu with amazing speed and accuracy. Large slabs of skin and blubber are sliced off. Note the handhold cut in each end of the slab to permit handling of the heavy pieces. It's amazing how these Eskimo can work for long hours with their bare hands in this ice cold water. The slabs are laid on clean grass until they can be cut into long, narrow strips and then hung on the drying racks. Each slab weighs from 30 to 50 pounds. As you can see, the blubber from one beluga contains quite a few calories. The flippers are the prized part of the whale and are eaten raw. The children have a picnic, similar to watermelon time in the deep south. There is plenty for all, just slice off a chunk and start chewing. Here is the whale meat and blubber drying on the racks. Mighty good insurance against hunger during the long winter ahead. Do you wonder that the next order of events is a celebration, a sort of thanksgiving for the spring harvest from the sea? You have to see and hear the Eskimo dancing to fully appreciate the strong, graceful motions and the strange offbeat rhythm. Many of the dances tell a story that is sung by the drummers. Others are called motion dances, like this one. Drummers pause just long enough for the next dancers to appear. Bright colored cloth parkas are the order of the day. 
Everyone joins in the fun and the dance will last just as long as the dancers can keep up with the beat of the drums. These native drums are made of the stomach lining of the walrus or large seal and are stretched over wooden frames. As the mystic rhythm gets into high gear, more and more of the dancers answer the call, each giving vent to his own interpretation. Once you've seen a true Eskimo dance, you'll never forget it. Just because these mothers have a baby on their back is no reason they shouldn't join in the foot race. The young fry have a novel Eskimo game they call the jump board, whereby they try to bounce their opponent off the end of the plank. This Arctic beauty shares a seat with an air-filled seal poke, which is used as a life preserver. The jump board is still going strong. Don't you think a fellow ever gets tired of this? The blanket tossing is a game that developed from the seal and walrus hunters who use this method of going aloft to look for open leads in the ice. I knew I'd get attention somehow. To qualify in this contest, you must remain standing when you land on the walrus skin blanket. The person who goes the highest in the opinion of the judges is the winner. Well, here I go again. I feel much better, though. This teenage girl shows us how it should be done. If you've always wanted to get up in the world, just step on the blanket. You're a cinch for the first 25 feet. This is more like it. I think I could even go to sleep now. No trip to the Arctic is complete until you've watched the Eskimo ivory carvers. Each spring, these Diomede Island natives make the trip to Kotzebue in their walrus skin boats. Most of the tools are homemade, similar to ones that have been in use for centuries by these people who are among the best ivory carvers in the world. Small figures carved from a solid walrus tusk soon take shape in the hands of these master craftsmen. Here is a bear in the making. Beautiful jewelry, such as these bracelets made of ebony black mastodon ivory and pure white walrus ivory, can be purchased direct from the carvers at a very reasonable price. Colorful summer parkas are furnished for your use while you're in the Arctic, and you'll want one when you go on a skinboat ride on Kotzebue Sound. You'll marvel at the ingenuity these people possess in making such a sturdy boat of driftwood covered with walrus skins. They have replaced the sail and paddle with modern outboard motors and are excellent boatmen. As you skim along the water in front of the village, you'll get a good view of the native people as they go about their everyday chores. Boats replace the dog team during the summer months and every family has one or more ranging from a kayak to a power-driven skiff. The airline operates its own hotel in Kotzebue, 
so you're sure of a good place to sleep. The family-style meals are becoming famous. Reindeer steak, she-fish, seal liver, native blueberries, cranberries, and other delicacies found in the Arctic are served in season. You'll be ready for such a meal after your zestful skin boat ride. You'll probably see some strange pets, such as Nanook, our baby polar bear. Her favorite playground is around the pontoons of this float plane where she furnishes many hours of entertainment every day. Her favorite snack is canned milk and she likes it best right out of the can. For her daily exercise, she pulls a dog sled over the tundra with an occasional charge at the pups who follow her. It's tough sledding, but she gets to see a lot of strange places this way. Yes, you may travel all over the world, but nowhere will you find a land that offers so many unusual, fascinating sights of breathtaking natural splendor. Here at the top of the world, only 1,500 miles from the North Pole, you'll see that fabulous North you've always read about, America's last frontier. You'll never forget the huge cakes of grinding, swirling, tumbling ice as they give way to the sudden Arctic spring. You'll marvel at Mother Nature's mighty hidden power as she relentlessly breaks the ice flows into millions of tiny pieces and then sweeps them out to sea. Once their breakup has started, there is no turning back. Massive, jagged slabs of ice weighing many tons rear up from the flow like giant sea monsters, then with a crashing roar, break and fall back into their icy grave. They may try to avoid destruction by climbing up on the shore, where they soon melt in the hot sun and warm wind. You'll thrill at the ever-changing shoreline and the fairy wonderland of weird, grotesque, ice-carved figures as they pass in review while you gaze out on a blood-red sun that refuses to set. Here at Kotzebue, the sun stays above the horizon for 36 days each year. For a vacation that is truly out of this world, we suggest you see your travel agent for a package tour to the top of the world, where the world's farthest north scheduled airline, Wien Alaska Airlines. Here you will see the true Arctic, the true home of the Eskimo, and the true land of the midnight sun. <laughs>